It is time for your favorite Android podcast from the crew of BlindAndroidUsers.com. Kick back and enjoy another fine episode from these Google fanboys as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here are your hosts. Hello and welcome to episode 53 of the Blind Android Users podcast. I'm Ed Green and I'm joined this week by Warren Carr, Austin Pinto and Fee Dunn. And we are coming to you on Saturday the 11th of December 2021. This week we have our announcements from Austin. Our must-have apps category is all about takeaway or takeout apps, depending on where you're from in the world. We have an app of the week. And we also have the talkback highlights from Warren. How are we all doing, folks? Warren, what's going on in Washington State? Absolutely beautiful. Today is a nice weather. Last couple of days have been very cold. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, uh, snow and there were lots of accidents and things like that. But today we're having beautiful weather. So I'm thankful. Fee, what's going on in London Village? Oh, it's cold. It's grey and drizzly and rainy and yucky. So, um, but it's going to be Christmas soon. And I've got some chestnuts to cook in the oven a bit later on and Christmas pudding and nice things to eat. So, you know, chestnuts it's good. roasting on an open fire. Exactly. Austin? So, in Mumbai also is getting cold and we are nearing Christmas, so... It will be Christmas soon, so it's going to be fun, but it's good weather. I like this weather. Yeah, one of the amusing things here is that uh, uh, I had a bet before the England-Australia Ashes cricket series that England would lose 5-0, because I don't think we have a very good side, and I don't really like our governing body. I got 9-1. to one. I put a ten pa- tenner on, and uh, I stand to win £90 in the new year, and we got spanked in the first match. So uh, it's looking good. I think I'm going to get £90 in January. Not very patriotic, though. Well, maybe next time you could uh, bet on the other side. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet where the money is. I agree with you. I'll take that moolah any day. <laughs> so, what, Austin, what, is, what, are the in- what is cold in India? How? What sort of temperatures are we talking about? We are talking about about twenty degrees, twenty-two, sometimes eighteen degrees Celsius. Oh, I wish. Yeah. Can we swap? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so that, that's it's more like five degrees cold. here. Wow, I would like that. Mm, yeah, you can have it. <laughs> and Warren's on the other scale as well. He's on Fahrenheit. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, you know, our mornings, you know, eighteen between eighteen and and twenty. So I, I don't know what that translates to uh, Celsius. Oh wow! So that's that's below Fahrenheit. Zero in- That'd be wow. freezing. That's really yeah. cold. So you've got ice. That's and stuff. minus numbers. Yeah. Oh wow. Wowzers. You got eighteen Fahrenheit? Yeah. Last night was actually seventeen. Fahrenheit? Um, yeah. Normal circumstances it's usually colder than that. You know, we you know, would have like way below zero and we haven't experienced, you know, sub zero temps uh, this year, so that's good. Wowzers. That is cold though. Austin, I think it's time for the announcements. So in today's announcements, we have got three or four announcements. The first announcement is our one-year celebration is next week, next Saturday. So we'll be posting the link to that on the Telegram group and the email group later this week. So you can join that by just clicking on the link. There is no need to register or anything. We'll be posting it to all. So whoever can come Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific, they can come and join the one-year celebration. The next announcement is what we are going to do is on Christmas Day, we are going to loop all the YouTube videos live. So it's going to be a 24 hours or 48 hours live looping of all the videos that we have on our channel. So if you have not viewed any video or if you want to spend your Christmas with us, you can come to our channel and view all the videos looping live. So that is it from the announcement section. 
And how will that work on Christmas Day, Austin? What will people do? They'll, they'll go to our normal link, will they, on the channel, and what will happen? Yeah, they'll get a notification that Blind Android uses is live, and they can just go there anytime, and they can see any video that they want. That is but, but, like, I mean, they can do it anyway, but, like, if they go to our channel, there'll be a live feed button. Yeah, a live feed. And they can, yeah. yeah, and they can join it. No, that's yeah. really cool. So, uh you just go to our normal channel and do that. I think that would be good. And if you're not and subscribed also, to the channel, you can just Google blind Android users YouTube or go to YouTube and just Google, uh, just search for blind Android users and find it. And also one more big announcement. We have crossed 500 subscribers on our YouTube channel. We have started the channel in March, 19th March, and today we are over 500 subscribers. So thanks to all who have subscribed and to all those who have not subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you are notified of all the new videos. Funny story is uh, we started it on the 19th of March. We were supposed to start it on the 18th, but Austin had too big a hangover after St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. So he couldn't get it done. Isn't that right, Austin? Yeah, that is right. <laughs> I didn't take any risk. Oh, there you go. Otherwise, I would I would have uploaded episode forty instead of episode one. So I thought thought we'll do it on the nineteenth. <laughs> what had was, you been it drinking? Was, Guin- was it Guinness? Probably. If it was St. Patrick's no, it was, Day, it was it was Old Monk Rum. Oh well, <laughs> then yeah. Wow. wow. Now we turn to our must-have apps, and I've got to say this is a favourite category of mine. This is this is takeaway uh, food apps or takeout apps, as we might describe them. Uh, normally, I would hand over to Warren to introduce an app category, but uh, Warren, this isn't really your bag, is it? No, it's not, because we don't actually even have any of those things in my area. Uh, No deliveries of any kind. Uh, We don't even have an Uber. And so I am not familiar with, uh, you know, grubbing apps. So I see this to you guys. It's time to eat. Wowzers. You really must live in a one-horse town. So I'll kick us off then. Um, In the UK, we probably have three main apps, I would say. Um, We have Uber Eats, which definitely exists in North America and other places as well. We have Deliveroo and we have Just Eat. What I would say about all of these apps is you need to have a look across the apps when you want to order food you know they they all do similar things you will you can go onto the apps you can order some food from a restaurant and it will turn up many of the restaurants appear across all of the apps but the pricing is not always the same so it's quite a complicated thing to work out what is best value for you at its worst I've seen a four pound difference for the same meal across two apps. Wow. So, yep. Uh, that was during lockdown, to be fair, when some of the higher end restaurants came onto the apps, uh, not pre lockdown when it was all just takeaways. But yeah, I have seen a four pound difference. But then you have to look at, well, what are the delivery charges? Because they vary as well. Does that difference cut down to? pound fifty, like there, there is a huge difference, and the restaurants can charge different things. The apps can also discount restaurants differently. Uh, some of that's apps, some of that's restaurants. Uh, it's not, it's not as you know simple as going well. You know, same restaurant, same price, different app. It's not. They'll, they'll be differently priced on different apps, and there'll be different delivery fees. Uh, and speaking of fees, we have a fee. Hello. Which app are you showing, Fee? Uh, I'm going to show Deliveroo. Um, and yes, it does takeaways, but it does also, it also lets you pick up takeaways from the restaurant, which again, it's still a takeaway really. But it also does um, table service as well. I didn't really look into that, but I think that's a post lockdown thing where you could use it in some restaurants when they were trying to, when they've been trying to minimize 
contact with waiting staff after the pandemic started. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that quick um, point. I had a slight problem during the demo because you always have some sort of issue during a demo, don't you? That's part of the thing. Um, where it wouldn't let me choose the curry, the exact curry that I wanted, um, even though I'd had it before on a a different incarnation of the app on my iPhone. Yeah, I just swore I said iPhone on this podcast. Um, very very strange it was. Uh, but then I showed and I have showed another um, restaurant that would allow me to have the same thing and a different way to get the same thing. It was rather strange. Um, but yeah, it's a very good app and I use it. Sometimes it is more expensive than some of the other apps, but there are other benefits to it. For me, I just find it the easiest one to use. I tried Uber Eats and I just wanted to throw my phone across the room, really. It was very annoying and <laughs> just not very intuitive. And I just, uh, no. Um, so yeah, it's. It's about personal preference, and sometimes, unless it's a stupid amount, sometimes it can be worth paying a little bit more um, if it means that you don't get stressed by ordering stuff from a particular app. And here we go with Fee's demo of delivery. Hello, this is Fee, and I'm going to demonstrate the Deliveroo app on my Samsung Galaxy S20 FE using TalkBack. Open Deliveroo. Opening Deliveroo, Deliveroo. restaurant picking up BKK delivers in 20 to 20 minutes. Rate of 4.3 from 104 reviews. Serves curry and Thai in list. Showing item six of seven. So with Deliveroo, you have to have an account. This is because then you can set up your payment method, and it knows your address that you've had food delivered to and you may be able to set up other addresses if you're visiting somebody else but I've never tried that so I'm not sure. You can also log in with Google and possibly Facebook and other things as well but I didn't. I did it with an email address and a password. It also remembers what you ordered and when. Um, you get an email and it usually says your order is in the kitchen and you get alerts to say your delivery is on the way and your driver is nearby. So this is an app for ordering takeaway meals. But you can also order groceries from various shops. But they do cost a bit more. The prices are higher than if you just went to the shop. But it can be a really good option if you just need a few bits and it's difficult to get out to the shops to get them. If the shops are open and they're on the delivery service, then you could order, for example, bread, milk, toilet rolls, things you might need soon. I tend to use it to order takeaway meals. So I will just give you a little flavour of how it works. So my first thing that it said to me is order again and that's because I've ordered from these restaurants before and it's remembered that so we've got restaurant coconut BKK delivers in 20 to 20 minutes rate of 4.3 from 104 reviews serves curry and Thai in list so that's coconut BKK they sell Thai food they're a restaurant that's quite nearby and next we've got Restaurant Ming's Takeaway delivers in 15 to 30 minutes. Rate at 4.6 from 500 plus reviews. Serves Chinese, Asian, noodles and seafood. Showing items 1 to 3 of 164. So the first one was um, Coconut BKK serving curry and Thai food, but they, they tend to be Thai curries. Uh, this is a Chinese takeaway, Ming's Takeaway. And it said it serves noodles and Chinese food and seafood and something else which I've forgotten, but you probably heard what it said anyway. Restaurant Butler's Thai delivers at rated 4.5 from 500 plus reviews. I serves curry. I don't know if I ordered from that one. Three to four of but that one says delivers at and then doesn't say anything. 
Now that usually means it's either closed at the moment or it's completely closed down. Whenever it says delivers at and doesn't give you a time, if you go into the details of the restaurant, uh, you tend to find that it's not open at the moment. There's lots of restaurants and you can search for a name of a restaurant. There's a search box at the top uh, or you can search for Thai or Indian or Chinese or whatever. Restaurant, Jake, selected, delivery, tab, one of three. So I've gone near the top now and there's three categories you can choose from. So I've got delivery selected. Pick up, tab, two of three. Pick up, so that's where you can order a takeaway and go and uh, not on the app and then go and pick it up. That's an option. Table service, tab, three of three. And then table, table service. service. I think that's been added since all the COVID lockdowns and then when restaurants opened again and they didn't want so much interaction with waiting staff. So I think that's where that came from because I don't remember that being a thing until all that happened. Account button, out of list. Oh, there's the account button. So I could change any details in there, I suppose. Um, Perhaps if I changed my email address or I needed to add a new payment method or stuff like that. Okay, I've scrolled to the top now. Um, filters, button, out of list. So filters, so I could choose that. And that would allow me to filter the type of results I want to see, the type of restaurants or shops. Here's the categories. Grocery. Pizza. Show a chicken. Show burgers. Show Chinese. Show Thai. Showing Asian. Showing Indian. Showing sushi. Italian. Showing a dessert. Healthy. Breakfast. So I've shown you that you can choose different restaurants. Now I'm going to open up the menu for one of the restaurants to show you how you can read all of the menu completely accessibly and pick all your own food, which is a lot more accessible than quite a lot of restaurant experiences where someone has to read it to you. Restaurant Coconut BKK delivers I'm going to open to that. Minutes. Coconut Retail. BKK. Deliveroo. Back. Button. Out of list. Share. Button. So share, I think that's where I could share that restaurant with friends and say, oh, this is a really good restaurant and it perhaps sends them a link. Search. Button. I think search would allow me to search for a particular thing I want to eat like green curry or, or prawn crackers or something so that bit gives information about where the restaurant is how many stars most people have given it out of five how many miles away from where I live the restaurant is which was not far at all um and then there's an info button if I want more information. I don't just now. Deliver in around 20 minutes. Change. Deliver in around 20 minutes. I'm guessing change means I could book for the order to come later. I don't know. I've never done it. Your recent orders. Now there's two ways to order things. I could either choose my recent orders and I will just do that to show you that once you've ordered from a restaurant, if you know what you want and you want the same thing, it's really quick to just order again. So I'll just show you that and then I'll show you a bit of the menu. Vegetarian spring rolls, plus two more items, 17 pounds and 15 pence space, space the 5th of December 2021 reorder, in list, vegetarian spring rolls. I don't know why it keeps saying space, that's very weird. So if I open that... Back. But or one ex vegetarian spring rolls, four pounds and ninety five pence in list. One ticked tick box. Okay, so these are ticked. So if if I wanted to, there's a thing at the, afterwards that I can add them to the basket. So I could untick that. I could think, well, this time I want the other things, but I don't want the spring rolls. Um, Tofu vegetarian. One ex gang panang. So that's a panang curry. Tofu one. One ex gang panam, eight pounds and fifty pence. Tick tick box. One ex coconut rice, three pounds and seventy pence. One ex coconut rice. Tick tick box. Add for seventeen pounds and fifteen pence out of list. So add that's where I can add them to pence. the basket, and then I could 
go to the basket selection of the app and pay for those things. I'm not going to do that. One expert back button. So there we go, a little bit of how Deliveroo works. I hope that gives you a good idea. Um, Deliveroo isn't available throughout the UK, just eat that Ed will be demonstrating is available in more places. I live in London and we definitely have Deliveroo and I'd imagine it's in other big cities but I'm not entirely sure where. I hope that demonstration was helpful. Now I don't like Uber Eats at all, so I I, I wouldn't I, I I think Uber Eats is a really annoying app. Um, I mentioned this on my demo of Just Eat. What I like about Just Eat is that where the takeaways have their own drivers, then the takeaway will deliver the food. With things like uh, Uber Eats certainly in the past and Deliveroo as well to a certain extent. I've had a situation where the takeaway will accept the order, but there's no driver. Uh, whereas on Just Eat, if it's something like a McDonald's or a Greg's, then fine, they'll use a Just Eat driver. But if it's your regular local takeaway, then they'll just transmit it through to the takeaway and the takeaway uh, driver will deliver it. So, uh, Uber Eats and Delivery don't seem to do that to quite the same extent. So Just Eat is my default. Uh, and here is my demo of Just Eat. There are obviously many different takeaway apps available or takeout apps, as you'd say, in North America. And Just Eat is one of the three main ones that we have here in the UK. The other two big ones being Uber Eats and Deliveroo. I like Just Eat because where takeaways have their own delivery drivers, uh, Just Eat tends to let the takeaway deliver the food. So you don't get a slightly odd situation you can get on Uber Eats or Deliveroo sometimes where the restaurant's prepared to make your food, but then all of a sudden Uber Eats and Deliveroo can't find a driver in their network. Um, if the takeaway doesn't have any drivers, then they won't accept the order. Uh, Just Eat will use its own drivers if they have restaurants on there that don't have their own delivery uh, drivers like McDonald's, say, or some of the uh, some of the higher end restaurants which have made their way onto takeaway apps since lockdowns. It's quite a good development that um, uh, the, the higher end restaurants uh, once once not being able to accept customers, they they would uh, find their way onto takeaway apps, and despite having reopened to the public, many of them are still there. So if I load up Just Eat on a Saturday night, I will have over 400. Uh, places willing to deliver to my uh, postal code, which is which is quite a lot. They are not all high-end restaurants, I must emphasise. Um, I'm recording this on Saturday morning. It's the uh, 11th of December, so we won't have very many restaurants open, but I'm going to show you the uh, a little bit about the app. We won't do all of it. And then I'm going to show you how to order something, uh, a more complex item where you're required to make choices about what you want the item to contain, just to, to, to show you at the more complex end of uh, Just Eat. So let's fire up the app. Just eat. Right, so I'll turn that up a little bit. Just eat. Here we Double. go. Just Eat. Home. Search restaurants. W1488TE. Best match. So it's my zip code. Let's just have a look at the bottom of the screen here. Search restaurants, restaurant logo, L search restaurants, restaurant logo. Oh, so it's, it's done the, it, it's already on my screen. So I'm going to, I'm going to back up so we can look at the main home screen. Just need open navigation drawer button, double navigation bar, back unlabeled, text, three unlabeled, text. We have some unlabeled buttons at the bottom. I'm going to open the navigation drawer. That's in the top left where you'd expect it. Menu. Edward Green, protect, find restaurants, your orders, for you, notification references, help, how are we doing, log out. So there we are, uh, we want find restaurants, I'm going to back out of here. Just need your favourites, Oriental, open navigate, W4, use GPS to popular search button. So I, I just swiped right for the navigation button. Uh, I could use a GPS. It had my postcode in. So I'm going to hit the search button here. And that search button is in the top right of the screen. So there we are. Um, 
we're on the screen we started on now. This is the search results screen. Let's just have a look. So that's quite helpful. Um, the, the obvious use case is you would use it to find a particular restaurant you wanted. What I like about this, though, is that you can use it to search for a dish. So in the summertime, we quite like cold noodles. Now, not every uh, Chinese or Pan-Asian restaurant will sell cold noodles. So all I would have to do is fire this up, type in cold noodles, and if it were evening time, it would search across those 400 and odd restaurants and tell me uh, which ones had cold noodles, if any. There's only about one or two, so not, not everywhere does it, as I say. So here we have different categories of what well, cuisine or indeed restaurants. So if I was bothered about low delivery fee, I could do that. Top cuisine image, your favorites. Top cuisine image, breakfast. Top cuisine image, sandwiches. Top cuisine image, Chinese. Top cuisine image, noodles. See more cuisines. See more. And if we wanted to sort these, we could go into more cuisine. And there's a lot in here and there's a lot of overlap as well. So most countries, even countries that you wouldn't typically associate with restaurants will have an entry in here. Uh, and if you selected them, you would hear uh, the restaurants associated with that uh, cuisine style or country. If we'd tapped on some of the highlighted ones, so if I tapped on Chinese, it would show uh, what was uh, available under that category. Not a lot in Chinese, I suspect, would be open now. But let's see. 142 open restaurants. Wow. We've got 142 open restaurants and it's 10.09 in the morning. <laughs> Wowzers. Uh, all of these, well, the vast majority of those would deliver as well. So 149 open restaurants at 10.09. Uh, <laughs> Promoted restaurant logo, Krispy Kreme, Hammersmith, Desserts American Festive Faves, delivery from 99 pets, no minimum order, 0 0.7 miles, 15-30 minutes, 28, 25% off all orders over 20 pounds, 2 or 480. Uh, it's saying 480 because at the bottom of my 149 open restaurants, it'll list all the closed ones, uh, tell you when they're open and will sometimes let you pre-order uh, so you can catch the first delivery. That obviously is Krispy Kreme. It told you where it was, roughly speaking, told you how far it was away, the estimated delivery time uh, and various other bits of information that you might want. Restaurant logo, Elodin, Brompton Road. Breakfast, lunch, low delivery fee. Delivery from 19... Restaurant logo, grill eat. Chicken pizza, collect stamps. Delivery, two pounds and 49 pence minimum. Wow, he can get pizza at 10.09. That's good. Restaurant logo, Love Walk Cafe. Breakfast, lunch, your favorites. Delivery from 99 pence, no minimum order. 0 0.9 miles, 35-50 minutes, 49. 10% off when you spend 25 pounds. 5 or 480. So Love Walk Cafe, I know, has a complex menu item. Uh, when I say complex, I mean you have to make a choice uh, about the item. So I'm going to double tap on here and go in. Restaurant menu. Just eat. Navigate up. Button. Out. Love Walk Cafe. Restaurant logo. Image. Restaurant info. Button. Double so I could tap here, go find out some stuff about the restaurant, see where it was, maybe find their number uh, uh, if I wanted to go pick it up, say. Uh, I don't want to do that particularly. Now, what's going to happen? When we uh, flick through this, or we could slide our finger, whichever way you want to do it, at the top, it will appear to announce a menu category like sandwiches, and it will announce one item. What it's actually doing is pulling out popular items from various categories at the very top, the main uh, menu categories uh, where you would go in to actually make a choice of sandwiches will be towards the bottom. Let me show you what I mean. We'll carry on. Uh, I'll, I'll just swipe freeze. Love Walk Cafe, breakfast, lunch, view 49 reviews, delivers at 35, 50 minutes, 4.84 out of 6 stars, button, I want to collect, 99 pets dash 2 pounds and 40, delivery fee, unlabeled, button, if you or someone you're ordering for has a food allergy or intolerance, tap here, search for a dish, breakfast, breakfast sandwiches dash 2 fillings, popular 5 pounds, and list. So there you go. Breakfast, breakfast sandwiches, two fillings, five pounds. If I double tap this, it would only let me pick two fillings. It wouldn't show me the other breakfast items. I'll show you what I mean again. Ciabatta sandwiches, tuna melt toasted ciabatta sandwich, popular six pounds. So ciabatta sandwiches, tuna melt ciabatta. If I double tap this, it won't show me ciabatta sandwiches. All it will let me do is order a tuna melt. So I'm going to touch towards the bottom of my screen. Ciabatta sandwiches, tuna melt toasted ciabatta sandwich, popular six pounds. Breakfast, classic omelette, popular eight pounds. 
Sayabata I'm going to have to scroll it because uh, it's not. Oh, there we go. Now we are in the menu. Uh, I, did, I did a scroll because actually the ciabatta and the uh, the omelet were the the, um, the popular items per category were taking up most of the screen. So I just did a two finger uh, flick up. I'm going to uh, swipe us. Or touch near the top. Sandwiches, mozzarella toasted, Sayabata sandwich, tuna milk toasted, Sayabata sandwich, Ambry and caramelized onion, Sayabata sandwich, Falafel toasted, Sayabata sandwich. So you'll see we're in the proper menu now. There might actually be more than four menu items under the category, or there may not, but it will read you the first few once you're in the proper menu, and, and that'll tell you that you've made the menu rather than just landed in the, the popular items. Sourdough sandwiches, chicken toasted sourdough sandwich, goat's cheese toasted sourdough sandwich, chicken club toasted I don't really want any of those. And cheese toasted sourdough sandwich. I'm going to go find the breakfast sandwiches, and I'm going to pick the three filling one. On the side, egg. Pancakes, American breakfast, berry pancakes, mood, breakfast, granola, cold drinks, coke, milkshakes, smoothies, breakfast, full English breakfast, popular nine pounds. Oh, and maybe the smoothies. breakfast sandwiches are further down. Maybe they're past breakfast. the two matters. Pancakes, bit on the sour dog, sciabatta, wraps, chick, jacket, but salads, burgers, hot drinks, cup of tea. Oh, it might even be in the breakfast bit. Let's go. Let's go into the main breakfast. Let's go into breakfast. See if we can find the sandwiches. If you were someone your own granola, delicious granola topped with yogurt, very competent fresh berries, six pounds, and list. Sounds absolutely disgusting. We're not ordering that. Toast, sourdough toaster, gluten free toast, served with peanut butter or tamper under your marmite, three pounds. How lazy do you have to be to order toast on a takeaway app? Feta avocado on toast, smashed avocado on toast topped with Feta avocado, that sounds disgusting to you. Happy vegan. Full English breakfast, fried free range egg, smoked free range bacon, free range Lincolnshire pork sausage, grilled tomato, pesto spinach mushrooms, baked beans, hash brown, served on sourdough toast, nine pounds and fifty. Yeah, that sounds moderately more sensible. Uh, if we forget the pesto spinach mushrooms. Veggie breakfast, cheesy sweet potato, chili cheesy eggs on toast, scrambled eggs, classic omelet, breakfast sandwiches, from four pounds. Breakfast sandwiches. Here's what we want. Uh, I thought they were a sub a category on their own, but they're not. They're a category of breakfast. So let's see what we've got in breakfast sandwiches. Choose one required. One filling, four pounds. Two fillings, five pounds. Three fillings, six pounds. So I'm going to go into three fillings. Choose one required. Baguette. Sourdough bread. Choose three. Sourdough bread. So we'll choose Double sourdough egg bread. Baguette. Sourdough bread. Now it won't indicate to us that that is selected, which is a bit of a problem. Well, it could, you know, it could be a problem, but but to be honest, you know, you've double tapped it. Just take its word, uh, or take your your uh, uh, talkback uh, uh, knowledge as good, and accept the fact that it's selected. Now, here are our fillings. So if I choose sausage, delete menu item sausage, but tomato. Delete menu item sausage button. One sausage. Onion. One sausage. So if I wanted to, let's say, have three uh, fillings of sausage, I think I just double tap this one. Delete two sausage. And it's increased the quantity. So I now have two portions of sausage in my three filling sandwich. Delete three sausage. Now I've got uh, three portions of sausage. I could hit delete to take it back down to sausage. Egg, Let's add some cheese. So it's marginally more helpful than it is when you're selecting the bread in this instance. Um, so it will indicate that we have one cheese, two sausage. Now, the add to order button is near the bottom right, where you'd expect. I know everything's been selected properly, so one of those, uh, that bread choice did take. If it didn't, this add to order button would be disabled. Just eat. Breakfast sandwiches. One, six pounds. Ready to check out. Out of list. Double tap. So let's see if it will let me check this out. And the checkout button again is sort of towards the bottom in the middle. Navigate up. Button. Your order. You're all set. If you were someone, your order. Delivery. Collection. 
it is set to delivery um, and you'll see it's confirmed there I did select sourdough bread which is what I double tap so it will it will confirm once you've added it to your basket and if for some reason it didn't quite do what you wanted then um, you could go back and change it that go to checkout button is in the bottom right I do want it ASAP so a note for the restaurant um so one of the things that I, they do here and i happen to know this is that they toast the bread so i could potentially leave a note here which says don't toast the bread uh do you just check what the instructions say because sometimes this is a delivery note field rather than uh, a food notes field it can sort of vary uh, that so uh, worth worth just pay, bearing that in mind so i'll go google pay so I can I can pay cash as well on this which is quite good uh, not all of them will let you pay cash so I'll buy with Google Pay so it was six pounds eight pounds and 49 pence uh because 249 delivery so this is this is a little bit uh uh misleading you'll see why in a minute it's going to say pay so if i were to double click this uh and i'm not actually going to do it because i think it might it might potentially no i will i'll double double tap it no, I'm gonna, I, it, it does look like it will take the payment if I do this, but, and I don't actually want the sandwich. But when I double tap pay here, you're then taken to a confirmation screen when you do have to confirm it again. I got caught out once on Just Eat. I thought that because I'd hit the pay button, I assumed, and it said confirm, and I, and I, and I assumed it was a confirmation screen, and it wasn't. It was, uh, so, uh, it, was a, it was a wanting me to confirm screen, and I sat there thinking, why hasn't my food arrived? And then I fired up Just Eat to discover there was actually a final step, and I had to put it through. So relatively simple app uh some good features once you have um paid by the way uh, it will send you notifications along the lines of uh whether or not your order's been accepted uh, you also get an email about that and you will get notifications that your uh driver is on the way as well so um that's that that's all I think it's worth showing. There were other things in the menu, as you will have heard when we went into that. But uh, that is how you essentially order an item on Just Eat. Great, Ed. You know, what I really like about these things, though, most especially for those of us who are blind, um, you know, comparing it to what it used to be back then, you know, you're alone and you don't have a way of getting to where you could, you know, get that hot meal or whatever, you know, you're lazy on a lazy day and you're not able to cook or whatever. And you could just kick back and have someone bring that uh, choice uh, meal that you want. And so I I'm actually happy that we have the ability to do something like this and it's a beautiful thing just imagine you know you have someone on a date and um, you you know <laughs> decide to maybe just dine in and so instead of you cooking someone else does that while you uh, kick back and play whatever games you want to play what i really like about these apps as well is that we can read all of the menu ourselves uh -huh. and we can take as long as we want to do that um, you know, if it's a new restaurant you're trying and you want to see all the different options. Whereas, for example, if, if in the past you were phoning, say, your local Chinese takeaway or something, they don't, they're not going to have time to read you all of the menu, you know. Um, Actually not on the phone. No, no exactly. It's so it's really lovely to be able to do that. And also sometimes I've been to restaurants um, with a friend and I've actually used the delivery menu just to know what I wanted in those restaurants so that I could read it myself. Now, sometimes they don't always do exactly the same choices on delivery and on the menu in the restaurant, but usually it's pretty similar. 
Um, yeah. And that's really helpful it, for independence, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. And you don't uh, have to be trying to take pictures of menus and missing half of the page accidentally or not having the camera at the right angle or all that kind of thing. Yeah, certainly, certainly for takeaway orders, it's much more accurate and much better. Like you don't need the, you know, the numbers. You just, you just put it through. And you can see which places are open now and which ones aren't, and things like that. And it's, it's very good. And how, also, how many stars people have given the place? I mean, you wouldn't want to order for a, from a place where everyone just gave it one or two stars, would you? I want to show you something. I told you this would be true on the Just Eat demo, but I want to prove to you that it is. I'm going to show you how many takeaways we'll deliver to my house right now. Oh, you just showed it off. Top cuisine image. See more cuisines. See more. Ready? Double tap to activate. 418 open restaurants. One of 429. And list 429 items. Oh, you're just showing off, Ed. Did you hear that? 418 yeah. restaurants will deliver to my house right now. Warren, how so, many will yeah. deliver to your house? Is it, yeah. Is it zero? Is it zero? Is it zero? Let me say something. Is you it? Is it not? Oh, children. No, hang on. You have a friend. And again. then that friend turns around and kicks you in the tummy. That's not fun. That's not good. It's no well, bueno, man. I'm going to go the ghoulies. <laughs> I wish I had two that would make delivery here. That would be absolutely beautiful. It kind of well, just makes me jealous. I've got 418. So wow. Wow. Saying. You choose the best out of all of that. <laughs> and now we turn to the app of the week. And this week, Fee again is going to demonstrate the Tesco app, one of our British supermarket apps. Hello, this is Fee and I'm going to demonstrate the Tesco app. I'm not going to do an entire weekly shop. I'm just going to demonstrate a few things to show you how it works. Open Tesco. Search button. Tesco groceries. Home. I already have an account. You have to have an account with Tesco because they need your payment information. And also it's really good because in your favourites, they show you things you've bought in the past. So you don't have to look for them in the different sections again, which I find really handy. I often look through all my favourites just to check I haven't forgotten anything before I go to the checkout. Hello, Fiona. When do you want your shopping? Okay, when do I want my shopping? Get Wush Delivery. Get Wush Delivery. That lets me get a delivery within an hour from a local Tesco store. The prices are higher in those local uh, Tesco Express stores because of the convenience, I suppose. Book a slot for later. I can book a slot for later. View all orders. I can view all orders. You can book a slot for later, and that can either be a home delivery, which is best if you're blind, I think, or you can book a click and collect slot. So if there's somebody with a car, you can go and pick up the stuff from a Tesco store. Book a slot for later. I'm going to go in as if I'm going to book a slot, just to show you how that works. Delivery options. Close. Book a slot. How would you like to get your shopping? Wish delivery. You get wish delivery. Click and collect from a chosen store. Home delivery to a chosen address. I've tapped Slots. that. Fixed one hour. Tomorrow. Page two of 21. So there's two choices of slots. You can either pick a one hour slot, which costs, I think, £5.50, or... Flexible four hours. Flexible four hours, that's the other one. And that costs three pounds. They give you a text on the day saying it'll deliver between 9 and 10 p.m., for example, just to give you an idea of when in your four-hour slot they'll arrive. But I think it costs less because it gives them a bit more flexibility and helps them organise it more easily. But I do find that sometimes at busy times... You can get a one-hour slot and you can't get a four-hour one. So I'll show you a couple of these one-hour ones because that's selected at the moment. 
even though I tend to use the four hour one, I think they automatically select the one hour one because they get more money for it. Cynical me. Hmm. Yes. Anyway. Eight o'clock to nine a.m. Unavailable. Four. Seven o'clock to eight a.m. Unavailable. That was Three left twenty. Swipe. Six o'clock to seven a.m. Five pounds and fifty pence. Not ticked. Radio button. Two of twenty-two. So if I wanted to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning, I could book that slot because it is available. Morning. One of twenty-two. Oh, okay. So that's saying morning. Six. Eight. So nine o'clock past. to ten a.m. Unavailable. Five. Ten o'clock to eleven a.m. Unavailable. Six of twenty-two. Eleven o'clock to twelve p.m. Unavailable. Afternoon, 12 o'clock to 1 p.m. Unavailable. 10 to 3 p.m. 6 o'clock to 7 p.m. Unavailable. 7 8, 9 o'clock to 10 p.m. 5 pounds and 50 pence. Not ticked. Radio button. Okay, 21 so the, of 22. As I thought, the later ones are available. 8 o'clock to 9 p.m. Unavailable. 10 o'clock to 11 p.m. Unavailable. 22 of 22. So there's only a couple that are actually available tomorrow. And if I change it to... Selected tomorrow. Out okay, so the Monday, days the are nearer December, the top. Tuesday, the 14th of December. Wednesday, the 15th of December. Thursday, the 16th of December. Friday, the 17th of December. Saturday, the 8th. Sun Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the Sunday, the 26th of December. Saturday, the 25th of December. Wait, they're letting you choose Saturday, the 25th of December as a delivery day? I bet if I went into it, they wouldn't let me. Slots for this date have all been filled. <laughs> yes, well, that doesn't surprise me. I'm going to pick Monday, the twentieth. The of Monday, the twentieth. Monday, the twentieth of December. Afternoon, nine of twenty-two. Twelve o'clock to one p.m. Unavailable. Up eleven o'clock to twelve p.m. Seven pounds. Not ticked. Wow. Seven of twenty-two. If you want a delivery nearer to Christmas, it costs seven pounds instead of five pounds fifty. Wow. Okay, guys, if you want to order a supermarket delivery do, and, and things will keep for long enough, do it soon or it's going to cost you more money. Wow. That's quite... I'm a bit shocked by that. Back button. Home delivery. I went back and then I picked home delivery again. Home delivery. Deliver to home. Change delivery. Selected. Fix one hour. Okay. So change delivery at deliver to home w change delivery address. So that would have said deliver to home and then my postcode, but I stopped it and then I can change the delivery address. So if I was, for example, visiting my parents and I decided I'll do their shop do a shopping for them and get it delivered to their house, I could do that. Or for a friend or something. Selected fixed one hour. Flexible four hours. I'm gonna try the flexible four hours and show flexible you. Flexible four hours. Selected. How that works. Flexible. Choose your window and will confirm a one hour slot. Today. Selected. Tomorrow. Monday the third. 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. Unavailable. 7 of 14. So I've gone minutes. further down the screen items. now to look at the look at the um, different times and whether any of them are available. 11 o'clock to 3 p.m. Unavailable. 10 o'clock to 2 p.m. Unavailable. 9 o'clock to 1 p.m. Unavailable. 8 o'clock to 12 p.m. Unavailable. 7 o'clock to 11 a.m. Unavailable. 6 o'clock to 10 a.m. 3 pounds. Not ticked. Radio button. 1 of 40. So you can get that one. So you get the idea. It's a four-hour slot and, um, yeah, they go forward an hour each time. So 6 to 10 a.m. and then 7 to 11 a.m., which isn't available. I wonder Eight if the ones at night one, are... Two, two, three, four, four, four. 6 at 7 o'clock to 11 p.m. Unavailable. 14 oh, wow. 40. So there's not much available. I haven't looked through all of them, but you get the idea. So that's how to book a slot. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Today, out of back button. Because you, delivery options. Home delivery to a chosen address. You don't have to um you don't have to book delivery before you can add things to your basket. So at the moment I'm not doing that. Work close. Close view all orders. I can view my orders from the past. Browse all groceries. I can browse all groceries. I'll show you that. Showing items 1 to 9 of 11. Bakery, 3 of 11. Fresh food, 2 of 11. Christmas, 1 of 11. So there's Christmas, fresh food, fresh food bakery, bakery, bakery frozen food, frozen food, food cupboard, food five cupboard of drinks, 6 of drinks, 11. Drinks. Baby, 7 baby, of 11. Health and beauty, health and 8 beauty, of 11. Pets, 9 of Pets. 11. Showing our household. 10 of 11. Household. Home and Ents. 11 of 11. Home and Ents. So household is things like light bulbs, batteries, 
cleaning products for instance now I need something to clean my window so I will and, and mirrors on my bathroom cabinet so I will go into the household one household household out of list household laundry one of 12 in list 12 so items. laundry if I wanted um, stuff to wash the clothes or um, clothes pegs anything like that Kitchen roll, two of twelve. Kitchen roll, very handy. Don't need any at the moment. Toilet roll, three of twelve. Toilet roll, got plenty of that at the moment, so don't need to buy that either. Facial tissue and hand wipes, four of twelve. It's a bit weird, this. It says facial tissue and hand wipes, but it seems to just be like normal tissues, you know, like Kleenex, things like that. I don't know why they don't just call it tissues and hand wipes. It's a bit strange, but there we go. Cleaning. Five of twelve. Cleaning. Okay, here we go. This is where I need to get some couple of things. So I've double tapped this. Multipurpose and antibacterial cleaners. Six of eleven. In list. Eleven items. This is multipurpose <laughs> and antibacterial. Multipurpose. Let me go back. Bathroom, shower and lime scale cleaner. Five of eleven. I need some bathroom cleaner as well, so I'll open that. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 megalitres, £2, £4 per litre, low everyday price, 3 of 24, in list. I need Not that. Ticked. That is exactly what I need, as well as the stuff for cleaning windows. I need two things. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 so megalitres image. Button. I've opened the uh, information for this. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 megalitres, £2, 4 add button. So I press the add button. One battle surface surface cleanser spray 750 megalitres, one pound and fifty pence, two pounds per litre, low everyday price. What sort by? Out of list. So now it's showing me some other products. Filter. Back button. Oh I see, it's taking me back to the cleaning ones. Okay, that's weird. Okay, that's slightly different to the iOS version. Okay, Filter. so sort by battle surface surface cleanser spray. Dettle surface surface cleanser spray 700 and Dettle surface surface cleanser spray 1 pound and 50 pence 2 pounds per litre Add button Flash cleaning spray with bleach 500 megalitres Flash flat 1 Add button Okay so you've got You have to swipe right a few times for each product So first it says Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 megalitres 2 pounds 4 pounds per litre So that's the viacle bathroom everyday price 3 of 24 That's the viacle bathroom thing So if I Swipe right on this one because I've added it to the basket. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 megalitres image button. Oh, so there's an image. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray 500 megalitres. Uh, so I've swiped right. That's the name of it. Two pounds, four pounds per litre. So it's two pounds and it's saying it's four pounds per litre. So I guess if you were comparing prices of different cleaners, you could go, oh, this one's four pounds a litre. The Dettol one costs this much per litre and you, you might want to do that to work out which one was cheaper for instance remove item from basket button so there's a button i can remove it from the basket but i won't do that because i actually do need that add item to basket button so i could add it to basket so if i wanted two bottles of that i could add another one so that's how that the list of different items works back button Polish, window and specialist cleaners, 8 of 11. Polish? I think you mean polish. <laughs> I just need to get the window cleaner. I'd forgotten about that. So the win let me see if I can find a good window cleaner. So I've double tapped that. Mr. Muscle Max Gel Unblocker 2x1. Add item to bath. Remove item from bath. Two pounds. Four. Viacle bathroom lime scale spray. Five hundred. Okay, so the bathroom one is in this section as well. Viacle. Viacle to add I Mr. Muscle Max Gel Unblocker 2x 1000 megalitres, £5.99. Mr. Mr. Mu five add bu Buster Bathroom Plug Unblocker 300 megalitres, bu Bust 2 pa add Mr. Muscle Platinum Window and Glass 750 megalitres, £2, £2.67 £2 per litre, Mr. Muscle Platinum Window, Mr. Muscle Plat, £2. Add button. Now I can add Sharing this to the basket to four, and I don't need to do what I did before and open the information at all. I didn't need to do that, so I can just add that. One in the basket. Add button. There we Sharing go. Items one in one basket. Tesco window and glass cleaning spray 750 megalitres, £0.85, £1.14 per litre, 8 of 24. Add button. So that Sharing one's a bit cheaper than the 
quite a bit cheaper actually than the Mr Muscle, but I'm going to go for the Mr Muscle. So there you go, it's, that's all the specialist cleaners. You get the idea, so I'm going to back out of that. And there's two more things I want to show you. So back go back again. So I'm going to go back to the Christmas one. Drink, food, frozen, bakery, fresh food, Christmas, 1 of 11. Sh Christmas, out of list, Christmas, showing items 1 to 11 of 13. Because you can't really have this time of year without looking at the Christmas things, can you? So... Christmas chocolates, sweets and biscuits, 6 of 13. Christmas desserts, cakes and mince pies, 5 of 13. Christmas party food and meat platters, 4 of 13. Christmas dinner, 3 of 13. Festive food to order, 2 of 13. New and exclusive, 1 of 13. So if I go back Fe down, because I was Christmas in the middle dessert, of the list. Chris Chris Christmas soft drinks and mixers, 8 of 13. Christmas beer, wine and spirits, 9 of 13. Christmas crackers and home decorations, 10 of 13. Christmas gifts and cards. Christmas brandy butter, spices and home baking. 12 of 30. Mm. Showing up finest Christmas. 13 of 30. So finest Christmas, I think that's finest as in there's a range of foods that Tesco do called Tesco finest. I'll go into Christmas Chris dinner. Christmas dinner. 3 of 30. I'll go into the Christmas dinner section. Christmas vegetarian and vegan. 5 of 11. Christmas fresh stuffing, 4 of 11. Christmas fish and seafood, 3 of 11. Christmas chicken, 2 of 11. Christmas beef, lamb and venison, 1 of 11. That's really weird. I haven't found a turkey. But maybe that's in the special order ones. Maybe you have to order a turkey. Especially, I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't know. Chris, cri cri Christmas, Christmas pork and gammon, 6 of 11. Christmas duck, goose and bed roasts, 7 of 11. Oh, maybe it's in there, the turkey. Anyway, as I say, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not going to look. Christmas turkeys, 8 of 11. Oh, no, they've got their own section. That's really weird, though. They're 8th down, not at the top. But maybe they don't sell so well nowadays. Who knows? Christmas vegetables and Yorkshire puddings, 9 of 11. Christmas sides, 10 of 11. Condiments and table sauces, 11 of 11. Showing items 1 so to 11 So that's the dinner bit. Christmas beef, back button. And then if you want Christmas pudding... Christmas beer, wine and spirits, no. Christmas soft, Christmas crisps, Christmas chocolates, sweets and Christmas desserts, cakes and mince pies, 5 of 30. I think you'll find it in here. Christmas desserts, cakes and mince pies, out of list. Christmas desserts, 4 of 4. Mince pies, 3 of 4. Christmas puddings, 2 of 4. Christmas cakes, one of four. So if you go into there, you can buy different sized Christmas puddings. So you can buy little ones that you just microwave. Christmas puddings, two of four. Tesco finest Christmas pudding, 400g, five pounds. Tesco finest Christmas pudding, 100g image. Button, one of Yeah, so there's the different ones. Christmas and puddings. The other thing on this app Black is you, you can read, with a lot of the things, you can read preparation information. And actually, I'll show you that for one of these. Tesco finest Christmas pudding, 400g. And they add one pound. Tesco finest Christmas pudding, 100g. So 100 grams Christmas pudding. It's just the right size if I want the Christmas pudding. So Tesco finest Christmas pudding 100 g image button. Tesco finest Christmas pudding 100 g one pound and fifty pence. One pound one pound and fifty pence per 100 grams. Any three for two club card price. Cheapest product free. Selected Tesco finest bakery products. Oh, so I could buy three for the price of two. So that that's. Uh, quite a good offer so if i open this tesco finest christmas pudding 100 g what not ticked but that didn't open only three for two club card add but tesco finest christmas pudding 800 g tesco finest christmas pudding 100 g amid tesco finest christmas pudding sort by up uh, tesco f five pounds what that's tesco not finest opening. christmas pudding 100 g amid tesco finest christmas pudding maybe tesco i have to finest. open the image tesco finest christmas pudding one showing items one to three of ten Special offer any three for two club card ah. price. Cheapest product free. Selected Tesco finest bakery products. One of ten in list. Ten okay, items. so it seemed to open when I double tapped on the image. Okay. Offer ends Saturday the 25th of December. Suitable for vegetarians. Two of ten. Product description. Three of ten. Show. Select to hear product description. Product description. Select to hear product description. So I'll tap that to hear the description. Well, it didn't do much, did it? 
Back button, up product description. 12 months matured by Christmas Day, Christmas pudding with Porvoisha registered versus cognac. 12 months matured Christmas pudding with Porvoisha registered versus cognac 100 grams infused with cider, amontillado sherry, and ruby port. Pack size, 100 G. Selected, home. So if I go back. 12 months back button. And now I want to find the preparation information because one of the really annoying things about being blind is not being able to read that on packets, although we do have apps for that now, but it's nice in apps like this where you can read these things without having to take photos of stuff and hope they've come out properly and stuff. Product description, 3 of 10. Select to hear product description. Guideline daily amount, 4 of 10. So, items, so this is the 10. nutritional stuff now. Energy, 1,387 kJ, 329cal, 16% of your reference intake. Fat, 8.2 grams, medium, 12% of your reference intake. I don't know if we want to know all this, do we, at Christmas? <laughs> worry about that stuff in the new year. Saturates, 3.4 grams, medium, 17% of your reference intake. Sugars, 40.2 grams, high, 45% of your reference intake. Salt, 011 G, low, 2% of your reference intake. Ingredients, ingredients, vine fruits, 38%, raisins, sultanas, currants, demerara sugar, wheat flour, wheat flour, calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, thiamine, glacate cherries, 6%, cherry, glucose fructose syrup, color, anthocyanins, acidity regulator, citric acid, cider, 4.5%, Colvoisha registered versus cognac, 4.5%, vegetable soot, palm oil, rice flour, sunflower oil, sherry, almonds, pasteurized free-range egg, water, pecan nuts, brandy, 2%, humectant, glycerol, molasses, orange peel, port, cream, milk, color, plain caramel, lemon peel, mixed spice, yeast, salt, spirit vinegar, wheat protein, emulsifiers, mono and glycerides of fatty acids, mono and acetyl tartaric acid esters of mono and glycerides anyway. of fatty Allergen information may contain peanuts and other nuts. For allergens, including cereals containing gluten, see ingredients in bold, 6 of 10, showing items 5 to 8 of 10. So that's really useful information for example, if you had a nut allergy or you have a gluten allergy, I mean, it's very unlikely you'd look at Christmas puddings if you had a gluten allergy unless they said gluten free. But, you know, it's useful. Um, it tells you also, you know, if you are watching your weight or if you want to know about um, various nutritional information that's there. Select to hear additional information, 7 of 10. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I could. Product warning, 8 of 10. Showing item 6 to 8 of 10. I think the product warning is going to be something like, when you've cooked it, this will be hot. <laughs> Select to hear product warning. Select to hear preparation information, 9 of 10. Showing items, safety information, 10 of 10. So, Select I want to hear preparation information, 9 of 10. Preparation information. Preparation, out of list. Prep, microwave from chill, leave in plastic basin and pierce film lid several times. Heat on full power for 50 seconds, 800 W, stroke 40 seconds, 900 W. Stand for one minute after heating. Remove the film lid and turn upside down onto a plate. One of three, in list, three items. So that's the microwave instructions and the 800w and 900w as you probably know refers to the wattage of your microwave steam time 30 minutes leave in plastic basin with film lid on place in a steamer over boiling water or alternatively use a large saucepan with a trivet or an upturned heat resistant saucer place the basin on the trivet stroke saucer and add boiling water to come one third of the way up the basin steam with film lid on for 30 minutes topping up with boiling water as necessary do not allow to boil dry remove the film lid and turn upside down onto a plate two of three cooking precautions removed from outer packaging all appliances vary these are gear lines only check food is piping hot throughout before serving three of three i think Showing gear lines should have said three. guidelines i think somebody missed out the d anyway so there you go you get you can get lots of good cooking instructions as well on all the products you buy or even the products that you don't so that's that couple more sections i want to show you back button 
Need something now? Check your local store before you visit. Out of list. So I'm now back on the home page, not the browsing page. And, and it's got that thing about check stock before you visit. Um, and it's talking about my local store. For a wash delivery, I think the minimum is £15 or something like that. Uh, or it was when I last did it. I mean, the app will tell you. For an order, for like your weekly shop type of thing, the um, minimum is £40. So you need to want more things. And there's a lot more variety of what's available. If you look at the whoosh delivery stuff, there are far fewer things because it's coming from a smaller store. Selected favourites. Last order. Lily O'Brien's the Lily O'Brien add but five pounds Hegarty spinach fat Hegarty spinach. Oh, okay. This add is butter. a few of my favourites. So the Lily O'Brien's are chocolates, feta and pine nut pie two hundred and seventy two. Pie that I like. Add butter Tesco finest raspberries one Tesco add green and blacks the miniature bar collect one hundred and eighty g five pounds and fifty pence three pounds and six pence per one hundred grams four of twenty. Yes, Show I like chocolate. Some of these things are quite expensive, but they're in my favourites because I got them when they were on special offers. But it's good having them in the favourites because then next time they're on special offer, I'll notice when I look through all my favourites. Green and add button. Fever tree light elderflower tonic 500 megalitres, £1.80, £0.36 per 100 millilitre. Add one pound and fifty pence club Tesco finest or ah. one pound and fifty pence club card price five of twenty. That's something else I haven't mentioned yet. So you can have a Tesco's club card. Now I have one, and mine is a virtual one uh, on the app, and I can get club card points. And if I have a club card, I can get uh, money off things. So this says one pound fifty club card price, whereas it's one pound eighty is the normal price. Now that's quite a good deal. So I'm going to add one of those. Add button. Showing items three to six of twenty. So that's Boom. Out of added. Fever tree light elderflower tonic five hundred megaliters. Remove add item to remove item from basket. Add item to basket button. So I could add another one. I won't though. One pound and fifty pence club card price. Tesco finest all butter and cherry scones four pack one pound and fifty pence zero pounds and thirty eight pence per Tesco remove item add item to butt Pringles Texas BBQ sauce crisps Pringles to add one pound Pringles is one pound and fifty pence club card price Ooh. seven of twenty so I can get cheaper Pringles as well at the moment so I'll add that add button Baylor's original Irish cream liqueur one L twenty pounds Baylor's ri- add Nine pounds and fifty pence club card price. Oh wow, that's a good deal. Add butter. I'm going to add that one. Solidos golden cherry chocolates in liqueur one hundred and ninety g three pounds. So add button two pounds and fifty pence club card price. Oh, they've got money off. I like cherry chocolates. Add button. So there I did. Special offers out of list. So. That's shown me a few of my favourites, but I could have pressed the show all button and shown the whole list. It gives you an idea. Um, So now it says special offers, and this is my favourite place, because sometimes I find new things, and sometimes I find things that I've had before and thought, oh, I can't buy those, they're too expensive, but when they're on special offer, that's a different matter. Show all. So uh, there's a show all button for special offers. Selected offers chosen for you. Offers chosen for you, so they're offers you might like. Sometimes they show you some uh, quite quite good ones, actually, and other times you think, really, why? Top offers. Top offers. Jude's vanilla clotted cream ice cream, four hundred and sixty megalitres, four pounds zero. Pa- Jude's vanilla add, but three pounds club card price. So it's just showing a few of them, just to give you an idea. The I haven't gone into anything this is just still on the home screen of the tesco groceries app in the offers section goose sticky hot toffee puddings two by 85 grams three pounds and goose sticky remove item from basket so you can tell i've already added those because they're yummy and they're on special offer add item two pounds and 30 pence club card price tesco clementine or sweet easy peeler pack 600 g one pound and 35 pence 
Tesco, remove item, add item to basket, button. 79p club card price. Well, that's a good price. Add I'm item to basket. I'm going to add those I like at this time of year. Of shop whoosh range. I can shop the whoosh range. So that this is at the end of the offers now. I can shop the whoosh range. I can look at this Tesco club card. Tesco club card, pay plus. Pay plus. Way to upgrade today. An upgrade today? No, I don't want to do that. Book a slot, button. Account, button. Selected, home. So there's the home. Favourites. Favourites. These are tabs now. Search. There's search. So if you know exactly what you want and you don't want to look through all these different sections, you could just open it. Like, for example, I wanted to buy some chestnuts because I love eating chestnuts this time of year. And I just opened the search bit and typed in chestnuts and found them. Club card. Then there's club card. You can see how many points you've got on your club card. And I think you can get vouchers towards your shopping and stuff like that. But the main reason I have a club card is to get these club card special offers where you get money off stuff. Basket, your guide price is £48.28. And, and then there's the basket with my guide price because there's some stuff already in it. I'll just show you basket, a couple of those. Your guide price is £48.28. Checkout, selected. So I can press the checkout button, which is it's just a normal checkout where you select how you're paying it. And you can have an, a note. So I tell them I'm blind, so please bring my shopping up to the flat. I will buzz you in or something like that. Anyway, um, so I won't show you the checkout, but the basket just shows you... Solidos Golden Cherry Chocolates in Liqueur 190g, £3, £1.58 and pence per 100 grams, one in basket, £2.50 club card price. So it gives you all the information there. There's, there's one of those in the basket. Baylor's Original Irish Cream Liqueur 1L, £20, £20 per litre, one in basket, £9.50 and pence club card price. So that's there. So I can remove it. I can add, add it. Basket, if I want two bottles of Bailey's. Tempting, but I won't. Not ticked. Substitute this product. Tick box. Ah, oh, that's an important one. So you can tick or untick whether you'll accept substitution. So, for example, if they didn't have any Bailey's, they might send me Tesco's Irish Cream or something instead. Um, I always don't tick the substitution because some of the substitutions that some of these places send are so ridiculous I'd, a lot of the time I'd rather not have something than have the wrong thing and have all the faff of sorting it out so I don't tick that box but if you're less fussy than me you might be fine doing that not ticked add pick a note for this product tick box so there's add pick a note for this product so now for baileys there's not much you could say but for example if it was bananas you could say please choose ripe ones or please choose bananas that aren't very ripe yet so i can have them ripening at home or you know you could it's probably more useful for things like yeah fruit vegetables that kind of thing so there you go so that's the basket um that's about it for this Tesco app. I hope you find that useful. I've generally found the drivers to be friendly and helpful, which isn't the app, but it is part of the Tesco shopping experience. Another thing I would say about Tesco is that um, a lot of um, the supermarket apps just didn't work at all when we first started having lockdowns here in the UK last year. And the only one I can th think of that I know definitely worked all the way through, even if you couldn't always get delivery slots, the app still worked. So if you decide to do some shopping with Tesco, I hope you enjoy it and have a good experience and get all the things you want. Thanks, V. And we conclude this week with Warren's highlights from TalkBack. We continue now with our theme of highlights from TalkBack, and this is installment 17. In our last installment, installment 16, we talked about home screen management. Today I'll be talking about three items. We'll be talking about how to get to the notification center and to the quick settings or quick panel. And then we'll conclude with customization of your keyboard on screen or physical keyboard. 
In today's demonstration, I'll be using my Pixel 5a running Android 12 L beta as well as TalkBack 12.1. In the way of a TTS engine, I'll be using the Seraproc using the Megan Voice. I am on my home screen now and I will now show you how to get to your notification center or notification shade. To show your notification center, in other words, to see what has come in in the way of a text message or a missed call or some other notification, all that it takes is swiping down from the very top of the screen with two fingers downwards and that reveals the notification center. For a sighted person, that involves just a single finger, but where a sighted person uses one finger, it calls for two fingers for a blind user, and where it calls for two fingers for a sighted person, that calls for three for those of us who are blind. So in summary, when a sighted person uses a single finger, I, as a blind person, employs two, and when they need two, I employ the third. For that reason, now to show my notification center, I will swipe down from the very top with two fingers and that should reveal my notification center. I will now swipe down with two fingers. Notification shade. 12.15 p.m. I swipe down with two fingers and it says notification center or notification shade and says the time. If I put my finger down. Bay. For bullet 1922. When you pull down your notification shade, the last item that is from your quick settings is showing at the very top of the notification items. In other words, just above that notification, you'll see the last item or the last two items. That is the last row partially showing from your quick settings. And below that will be all of your notification items. And so I'll put my finger down again, move my finger down slightly. Blind Android users chat, bullet, telegram. There's the blind Android users uh, chat from our telegram group. And if I move my finger down. Reply to blind Android user. There's a reply button, so I could tap there to reply, and then to the right of that would be... Marcus Reed button. And then... Notification snooze options button. Here I can go in and choose whether to have this thing snoozed or place it in the silent column. That's going to be a total episode on its own, but this is simply to show you how to get to your notifications from your home screen. Now, below that, if we have another notification item. Chris Cuomo suffers another blow after. There's another notification there. Now, if I want to swipe away this notification that talks about Chris Cuomo, all that it involves is using two fingers and swiping either left or right from the middle of the phone, and that will do away with that particular notification. I'll go ahead and do that, and you see what I'm talking about. I'll now swipe from left to right from the middle of the phone. 12. And put my finger down. Blind Android users chat. That's all I have, and if I move my finger down. Clear all notifications. Button. I have clear all notifications. I have swiped away that, and all that I have left in the way of a notification is the one for blind Android users. If I want to go to the quick settings or the quick panel from here where I'm sitting at, which is in the notification shade, all that I have to do is swipe down again with two fingers. Quick settings. Now that I swipe down with two fingers, we hear quick settings. And if I put my finger down. Display brightness. This slider. Display brightness. Go down. Internet, comma, three mesh. Internet. Bluetooth. Do not disturb. S flashlight. Switch. Oh. And there are two pages here in my center. But I do want to point out here that whether you're on page two or page one, at the bottom of the list of the items found on each of those pages are three items. At the bottom left, we have Edit Order of Settings button. Edit Order of Settings to the right of that. Power Menu. Button. Power menu. Open settings. And Button. open settings. Now the edit order of settings entails 
the movement. In other words, if you want to move one item from one position to another, for instance, if I want to move my internet connectivity thing to second position or the third position or even move it to the second page, that is what I will do in order to move it. Now to the right of that is the power management. That means you could tap on that and just go ahead and choose whether to power down the device or restart the device and things like that. And the last one on the right hand is the one that is very familiar to everybody. Tapping on open settings will take you to the system settings where you could find all the settings relating to your phone. And now I will navigate my way back to my home screen by swiping from the bottom of the phone with two fingers upward and go back home. Pixel launcher. Now I talked about using three fingers. So in other words, if I simply want to jump to the quick settings or quick panel without the need of swiping down, opening up notification, and then swiping down again with two fingers to open up the quick settings or quick panel, all I need to do is using three fingers, swipe down from the very top of the phone with three fingers to reveal that quick panel. I will now demonstrate that by swiping down with three fingers from the top of the phone and swiping all the way down. Quick settings. Page one of two, collapsed. And there's my quick settings. By simply swiping down from the very top of the glass with three fingers signal. downward, I open up the quick settings panel. I'll now navigate home. Pixel launcher. The last item in this entry will be the customization of the keyboard. And that has to do with either an on-screen or physical keyboard. In other words, we're going to go in and customize to say either character, characters and words, or say nothing at all when I hit the space bar. I will now invoke the talkback menu by tapping with three fingers since this phone supports multi-finger gestures. Talkback menu, navigation, enlist. I am now in the talkback menu, and the next thing I would like to do is to find and tap on talkback settings, which is the second to the last item just above the text to speech settings. Talkback settings. Let's go ahead and tap here. Talkback settings. Navigate up button out of list. We are now in the talkback settings. What we will be looking for is an item here called verbosity. I'll put my finger down, find and tap on verbosity. Verbosity. There is our verbosity and I'll tap. Verbosity. Navigate up. Button. Out of list. Tapping on verbosity, what we're looking for is an item that talks about keyboard. I will now scroll down and we'll first talk about the on-screen keyboard. Keyboard echo. On-screen keyboard. Characters and words. So by default, whether using an on-screen keyboard or physical keyboard, when we type, Gboard would say the character, and when we hit the space bar after finishing typing a word, it will say the word. For example, if I type in the word D O G for dog, and I hit the space bar, it will say dog. Let's go in here now and see the customization for the on screen keyboard. On screen keyboard, none in list. Tapping on on screen keyboard, the first item we hear is none. In other words, if I tap here, I'll be setting it to none. Say nothing at all. The next item here is characters. Showing characters, that means it's going to say character by character as I type words. Words, in other words, if I type the word Doug, it's not going to say the characters. After I find a character, after I find a letter, for example, and find letter D, and I lift my finger, it's not going to repeat D. But when I'm done and I got to letter G and I find letter G and lift my finger, it's not going to say letter G. But after I hit the space bar, it will say dog. Next item. Characters and words. Checked. 
characters and words. And like I said, this is by default. Whether it's this on-screen keyboard or the physical keyboard, it is set to characters and words. In other words, if I'm typing that word dog, D-O-G, when I find the letter D, it will say D. And if I lift my finger, it will go ahead and say D again. And then at the end of letter G, and lifting my finger and it says letter G, and I hit space, it will say dog. Let's show you what I'm talking about, and then we'll come back quickly and go change to using none. I'll now navigate out of here by going home. Pixel none. I will now simply bring up the assistant and tell it to open keep notes. Open keep notes. Keep notes. New list. There's my keep notes, and at the bottom, I'll find and tap on new text note. New text note button out of note op note edit box for note body in list showing English US QWERTY keyboard. I am in a new text note. I'm going to put my finger down and find letter D, because remember, this is now using the default setting. Capital D, Delta, capital D. I put my finger down on letter D, and then it says Delta, and when I lifted my finger, it says capital D. Now I'll put my finger on letter O. O, O. I lifted my finger and it says, oh, I'll put my finger down. G, golf, G. Lift my finger, it says G, now I hit the space bar. Space, dog. And there it is, it says dog. Now let's go back to the talkback menu and go set it to none. I'll tap with three fingers. Talkback menu, navigation. Text to speech settings. Talk back settings. Tap on talk back settings. Keyboard. And now Showing tap item. on verbosity. Verbosity. Now scroll down and tap on on screen keyboard. Keyboard echo. On screen keyboard. Characters and words. Let's tap here. Keyboard echo. On screen keyboard. None. Endless. This time, we're going to tap on none. Verbosity. Keyboard echo. On-screen keyboard. None. Endless. Now, I'm going to go back to Google Keep Notes. So I... Talk back setting. Back. Showing English US. QWERTY. Keyboard. Keep notes. Dog. Edit box. Editing. Note for so there I am. I'm back to my keep notes and I'm still in that editing field with that word dog. I'm going to hit the space bar or rather the delete key to erase the word dog. Delete. Space deleted. Delete. Capital D deleted. Okay, so I have erased the word dog and now I'm going to retype the word dog. This time with my keyboard set to none. In other words, it's going to tell me the keys as I move my finger around, but when I lift my finger, it's not going to repeat that letter. Here's what I'm talking about. Capital D. Delta. Lift my finger, and I didn't hear D. Now I'll put my finger down on letter O and lift it. O. Lift it. It didn't repeat letter O. Now find letter G and lift it. G. It didn't repeat letter G. Now I'm going to hit the space. Space. I lifted my finger on space bar and I did not hear the word dog. So it is showing that I have set my keyboard to none. Of course, I will need to be able to know what keys I'm hearing, but after I lift my finger, it's not going to repeat the letter I just touched. And also, hitting the space bar is not going to tell me the word I just typed. Put my finger down. Dog. Edit box. Editing. Note for note body. There's my dog. Now the next thing I would like to do is to use the physical keyboard. 
and I have paired my Logitech K850 with my phone. I'll turn it on. Configure physical keyboard. Tap to select language and layout. English US QWERTY. Keyboard hidden. Keep notes. And immediately it closes my on-screen keyboard. And since by default this is also set to characters and words, there's no need for me to go in and switch to characters and words mode. I will simply go ahead and type here. But first, I'm going to hit the backspace to erase the word dog that we wrote earlier with our on-screen keyboard. I'll now hit the backspace. Space deleted. G deleted. O deleted. Capital D deleted. There we go. Now, I'm going to start typing with one finger. Put my finger on my keyboard. D. I put my finger on letter D. I lift it and it says D because it's set to characters and words. I'll put my finger on, on letter O. O. And now I'll put my finger on letter G. G. Hit the space bar. Dog. There's my dog. And if I go right... Space, G, O, D, beginning of field. And if I just do control right arrow. Dog. And if I do control shift left arrow. Dog, selected. There we go. Now I'm going to go back in the talkback menu and go set it to none. Talkback menu, editing. Go to talkback settings. Talkback settings. Talkback settings. Navigate Go to up. verbosity. Verbosity. Navigate up. Button. Now I'm going to go down to physical keyboard instead of on screen keyboard. Keyboard echo. Physical keyboard. Characters and words. Keyboard echo. Keyboard echo. Physical keyboard. None in list. I tapped on that and it says none. I'll tap on none. Verbosity. Keyboard echo. Physical keyboard. None. In now I'll go back to Google Keep Notes. I'm going to hit the back and back and back. Top. Showing board. Keep Notes. Dog. Edit box. Editing. Note for note body. In list. I will now put the phone down and use my two hands to type since I've set it to none. And I'll go ahead and type. Selected text. We already selected the word duck earlier, so I'm just going to type over it and I hope it types over it. Here I go. Replace duck. All right, I just finished a little typing and I'll just up arrow and hear what I type. We appreciate each and every one of you. Blind Android users podcast. Thank you for taking your time to listen to the beginning of field. So I have typed in the following. Thank you for taking your time to listen to the Blind Android users podcast. We appreciate each and every one of you. Edit box. Editing. And that's what I typed. Now, so I could go down. Thank you for taking your time to listen to the. I go down. Blind Android users podcast. And I could read character by character or word by word. Podcast. I'm doing control left arrow. Users. Android. Lined. B. Two. Listen to. Time. Your. Taking. Four. You thank beginning of field. I am at the beginning of that. And I could select character by character or word by word, just like I would on my computer. Go and select word by word. Thank. Selected. You selected. Now character by character. Space. F. O. R. Selected. Now, or I could do a select all with control A to select all. I will now go ahead and do control A. To select all. Select a text. Thank you for taking your time to listen to the Blind Android Users podcast. We appreciate each and every one of you. 
And that concludes installment 17, where we talked about how to get to the notification shade, the quick settings, and customization of your keyboard, be it an on-screen keyboard or a physical keyboard. So, Warren, I think the question we need to ask you after this is, are you any closer to installing G-Shui? It's one of those things that you can't really get me to doing. And so uh, if anyone is pining away for when Warren is going to install uh, Joshua, like um, Austin used to say, uh, forget it. Joshua is not coming anywhere close to my phone. Austin, where can people find us? People can find us on our website, blindandroidusers.com. They can email us if they have any questions to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. They can subscribe to our mailing list, Blind Android Users, plus subscribe at groups.io. They can join our Telegram group, Twitter, Clubhouse, and YouTube. The links will be in the show notes. So that is it from episode 53. Google 5. Yeah. See you next week, folks. And bye, everybody. We love you. Bye-bye. And that has been another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. As always, we appreciate hearing from you. You send those email messages to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. For those My Android Journey stories, we encourage you to send those to myandroidjourney at blindandroidusers.com. Until we see you in our next episode, you have a wonderful day.